I am audible, right? I am an agriculturist, so I, I think I can speak loud enough without mic. So, okay, so uh, today's topic is about climate change. So, I will talk about, to begin with, I will talk about my microclimate that exists around me. So, I, I him. I also uh, live with uh, smog and uh, uh, think about the odd and even with my wonderful wife Rinilla and two wonderful kids around me, Rohan and Rohit. But internally, I'm a born and diehard, passionate painter. So I love a uh, blank canvas that could be uh, a blank sheet of paper or maybe a field, maybe a business, whatever. So I like, love colors. So, you know, let me also take this opportunity to thank uh, TEDx Pani Park for this excellent platform and uh, wonderful crowd here, participants, speakers. Uh, to start with the climate change, I will talk with, you know, start with five facts. Uh, I'm sure many of you know, but then I will start putting those into the right perspective. So the world is warmest in the last decades, not for one or two years, 125,000 years. What it translates to, 1.2 trillion metric tons of ice we are losing every year. 1.2 trillion tons. And if we don't do anything about the climate change, uh, beyond 2030, it will become an irreversible phenomenon. Right now, the greenhouse gas is at its highest level. Carbon dioxide level is also highest in last two million years. And more than one million species will see extinction beyond 2050. So it's, it's a scary situation. There is no doubt about it. But as I think uh, rightly pointed out by some one of our speakers that, you know, these are inevitable. This is, this is nature. This is how it bound to change. But what we could probably do, because we, we inherited this nature and we have some amount of responsibility for the future. And I represent one of the sector called agriculture, which is supposed to provide the highest GDP in this country and highest level of employment in this country. Uh, not so glorified though, but still, I think that is the basic, where, you know, and how strategically I am here, because beyond this talk, we are going to have food, and without food, we are not going to live, and that's from agriculture, and when I'm talking about climate change and agriculture, I'll precisely talk about the risk and its impact, and what we should do about it. And when I talk about precisely on agriculture, I will talk about soil health. Without soil, you can't grow. Of course, there are now, uh, there are multiple mode of growing plants, but those are not scalable enough. So I will talk about the food security so that we can secure food immediately after this. And then I will also talk about human health because without food, without soil, I don't think uh, health will be good enough, forget about mental health, first we have to be, you know, working through. So when I talk about soil health, let me give you another perspective. We are live with 60 years of farming, not me, that's FAO and UN, United Nations talking about. 60 years of farming, that is what all left. Why it's so? Because of soil degradation soil erosion. Each minute we are losing 30 soccer field, football field, each minute of soil. So that's what is happening. It's scary. And the topsoil, those who are not exactly from agriculture, I can talk about it a bit more. So it's 5 to 7 centimeter of the soil which is the topmost layer of the soil, which we call topsoil, that is 100% responsible for growing crops, what we eat. So if there is no topsoil, there is no agriculture, and there is no food. So that's what it means. And to 
generate I said 5 to 8 centimeter, that is called topsoil. To generate 3 centimeter of topsoil, it takes 1000 years. So that's what it takes. If we disturb those topsoil, what it can. As I started this discussion in soil that, you know, we are left with 60 years, just because of this, because the way we are losing the topsoil, it will remain there for another 60 years if we don't do anything now. And two-third of the arable land, what it exists now, will become not suitable for agriculture within 2050. So we don't have much time, but yes, this is something we really need to think about. Now the second topic in this particular, the second, second I, I, you know, the second phase is how about food security. I think climate change has the highest impact on food security. And beyond 2014, the rate, the way people have faced hunger has grew multiple, in multiple segments. Although in the last three decades, our food production has just gone double. So self-contradictory, there's something must be happening there, either food waste or whatever. Second fact is that this hunger will also importantly going to, you know, impact lot of developed countries apart from the underdeveloped countries. So it has a direct impact on that. So more than 27% population, which is roughly around 3 billion, you know, will face this hunger crisis by 2020, uh, you know, 2030. So the these are parameters which actually describe that, you know, how food security is going to get impacted. And the third piece is human health. So human health is supposed to be, the climate change is supposed to be the biggest danger on human health. Between 2030 to 2050, each year we are going to lose 250,000, since 2.5 lakhs you know, death each year only because of climate change impact. It may not be huge, but you know, the way we lost uh, life because of diabetes, there can be many theories, but this is one of the impact, right? And the second impact is when I talk about the human health, so this, this is not only about losing health. Each year beyond 2030, each year we are going to spend more than four billion dollars just to adjust the cost that we are going to incur for this climate change in the human health. So these are risk and impact on agriculture. Are you going to do anything about it? So there are certain suggestions or there are certain things which we can possibly do. Not necessarily I have to be an agriculturist, we have to be an agriculturist, but we can always talk about it in all the forums, talk about it in all respective areas and possibly in all possible ways we can we can you know give it back to the people whomsoever is directly linked with this and that's why that's how probably we can contribute to a limit one of the important factor in agriculture is now it is already coming in this concept is already coming in, is climate resilient agriculture which is a sustainable way to deal with agriculture so what is sustainable agriculture. We use lot of irrigation, lot of deforestation is happening, lot of building are being, you know, produced or prepared everywhere. We are using indiscriminately chemicals, fertilizer in the soil. These are all directly and indirectly impacting the soil. So possibly the sustainable way to grow this is probably, you know, optimize the fertilizer, chemicals, grow more plants, providing crops or going with the crops which actually helps in that particular soil to generate more nutrient on its own. So there are multiple ways like you know if I take an example like uh, in India uh, like a place called North India which is predominantly devoid of, you know, it's a low water level, uh, you know, what water level is extremely low. This place is not supposed to grow, this geography is not supposed to grow paddy, which, which requires huge amount of water. But we grow the maximum amount of paddy 
in north north india surprisingly and they, they don't eat it but it's it's you know somewhere we need to really think about it, why we are doing it so a lot of policy maker is right now not there but a lot of policy makers need to really think about it so there, it is not only about the agriculture who is doing agriculture it is about the policy makers it is about the government it is about a lot of you know organizations to really work on this if we can save it second is efficient use of water like you know the north india you know there are multiple ways now where we can actually save water uh, you know we don't have it in plenty of course water is also not something which you know we'll, we'll get it in plenty so there are ways of drip irrigation there are ways of rainwater harvesting so there are multiple ways which we can you know efficiently use the uh, you know technology to reduce the use of water or rather optimize the use of water third important piece is uh, again the technology the precision agriculture so use of ai tools or uh, use of you know geo tracking use of multiple modes of technology i think the technocrats will provide a better insight about it but those are very important factor to optimize the resources which we are constrained of today so all the resources that we are currently ha using for agriculture can be optimized the chemical can be optimized the fertilizer can be optimized the water usage can be optimized everything can be optimized provided we use and integrate and collaborate with this technology you know in agriculture india is a small country uh, in terms of land holding for for a farmer there is 128 million farmers in india so they all have a small land holding so maybe the approach of integrating this ai and precision agriculture needs a different outlook and a model but it is not impossible so there are a lot of you know cooperative collaborative approach needs to be taken in order to you know integrate this artificial intelligence and technology tool in agriculture so that may be another way forestation if you know we we heard a lot about deforestation somebody was talking about if i can plant one tree in my life yes i think every one of us should do that whenever that is possible or motivate somebody to grow one more plant so that will probably help this forestation has a very important aspect so it will not only save the soil it will also help the environment to have more oxygen and you know take out you know take in lot of carbon dioxide right the another aspect is food wastage the amount of food post harvest wastage that we do we can in each year the amount of wastage we do we can actually feed to europe each year the amount of food we waste and not only that this food wastage the kind of food the post harvest loss all put together will actually translates to lot of greenhouse gas emission so they are one of the significant contributor so again it will lean back to not only individual to an organization to government to policy makers to really build up an integrated solution for post harvest to reduce the post harvest loss so that is another another aspect where you know agriculture and you know can effectively reduce the or in, you know reduce the burden of uh, creating more issues in climate change agriculture by far is the highly energy consuming energy, you know industry so agriculture of course use lot of energy whether it is a uh, irrigation uh, method whether it takes for the use of transportation because you need lot of logistics to move around you use lot of fertilizer manufacturing those fertilizer chemicals everything requires lot of energy so possibly sustainable mode of energy or renewable energy needs to play an important role there so whether it's a biofuel or whether it's a solar energy or wind power we can use each one of them not the battery operated one only because i think it has its own positives and negatives without getting that into detail but i think the, there are multiple sustainable way where we can it can play an important role to save the energy and stuff like that last but not the least i think one of the important factor is education so what i know what you know 
if we all collaborate, if we all try one small step to actually put this information in the right perspective and, you know, and get it back to the farmers, get it back to the people who are directly linked with agriculture and make them aware that, you know, this is the world we, we have today and this is what it is going to be if we do not do things in the proper manner. And this is where we are going. And if we don't do anything beyond 2030, we will not have any opportunity to do anything either. So I think that is something we all should do, whether we are from agriculture or not. Fortunately, I could able to represent agriculture. I think I am the only one who is talking about agriculture today in the TED talk. And if I, if I stop there, I will really ask that, you know, whatever little we talk about agriculture, climate change and its impact to agriculture, why it is so important, fortunately or unfortunately, we do not have a plan B. There is no other plan available for us. So we need to live with it and we have to give something to the next generation to feed on and to keep talking about this. Thank you very much. That's what I had for the day.